testimony, and um, you know, I've been outside in the field all day. Um, just had to come and, and, and set up the tent. The Lord has been telling me for a long time to set up the tent, and they'll come, right? And, um, you know, I've been procrastinating and uh, waiting on this one and that one, and I finally figured out that I wasn't waiting on nobody but myself. Of course, being <laughs> obviously supernaturally saved, when when the Lord tells you to get up and do something, just go do it, okay? It's just a whole lot simpler. Um, you know, sister with a testimony, saint with a testimony, soldier with a testimony, wherever you're at today, you got a testimony. Oh, technical difficulties, sorry. So listen, I went out and I bought one of them 300 watt inverters and uh, found me a deep cycle battery and uh, hooked it up. I got music now, I got whatever I need. Um, I've been um, just sitting out here and doing random acts of kindness and uh, making the little flowers. I started out today with Brother David and uh, you've seen him on video before. Uh, he gave his testimony about how great the Lord is uh, several weeks back and um, I ran into him today and he was trying to cut his hair. Uh, Brother David's homeless and uh, he was trying to cut his hair and it's the funniest thing because I always leave my stuff at home but I actually happen to have my really good scissors that I use to do random acts of kindness with, which are pink. Well, I traded him out these red ones for my pink ones so he could cut his hair. And he said, I promise you they'll still cut paper. So by the time I got my paper out to cut it, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if these scissors are going to work. So Brother David wound up being right. Um, I had a Gatorade for him. And um, I always have a Gatorade for Brother David because um, that's what he wants. And uh, he really encouraged me today, saints. Brother David, he's homeless. He's got several infirmity problems. And he encouraged me. He said, did God tell you to come to Texarkana? Did he tell you, Leslie, to come to Texarkana to the homeless? Yes. He said, well, then don't worry about these other ministries and these other ministers. He said, they're obviously threatened. He said, um, just keep coming and helping us. He said, because I really love it when you come, and I would, not want for, I would not want you to stop. So he encouraged me to keep doing what I'm doing. And um, I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to go over here and, and uh, see what the deal is. I had called this real estate agent and asked him if I could set up a tent. Well, he usually charges 30 bucks for people to come and have their little yard sales here. It's an abandoned vacant lot. He let me come... He said, since you're going to give out water and pray for people, I'm not going to charge you. I said, well, I'll go and I'll ask the people that are paying if they mind if I come. So my testimony today is this. I show up, first of all, talk. I get to see Brother David. I haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. He encourages me. So that's, that's the Lord. And that doesn't even cover the fact that when I stop to get the inverter, what do you call it, the battery cable for the ground on it. This young man had been in prison for like 20 years. The Lord radically saved him. Nobody realizes who he is in Christ. So I seen him two weeks ago when I bought the inverter. Today I go back to get what I needed to, to hook it up. He's there again. He tells me his testimony. Him and I are in tears. I got blessed not only by him. He's going to come and uh, he's going to give his testimony and start preaching the gospel. But when I told him I knew he was a Christian the first time I seen him, he just started tearing up and um, pulled out his little cross. And I said, I already knew you were a Christian. You didn't have to say nothing. You didn't have to do nothing. I felt your spirit. But guys, let me tell you what. If you'll just get up and do something for the Lord, if, give somebody a flower, okay? You, you, can, you can get a card, okay? You, you can do this. You can go buy some cards at the bookstore and just write a blessing, Give somebody a flower pen. Do something. So I come out here and I start to set my tent up. And I realize it's going to take more than one person to set this tent up. So check it out. The lady that's here selling stuff, she's selling stuff. Uh, everything's a dollar. Nice stuff. You need to come down here and get some of it. She's raising money for the 150 girls that she takes on a cruise once a year. She's a retired, not a retired pastor, but she got out of the four walls. 31 years pastoring. And now she works with girls. She's still pastoring. She comes over, helps me set the tent up, prays for me. Woo! Hallelujah!
Hallelujah. Sometimes I need prayer. Hello. Y'all pray for me. So we had church there. Different people that were at the yard sale come by and pray. I prayed for more people today after I set the tent up and obeyed God than I ever do go around looking for them. I gave away all my water except six bottles, had a whole cooler full. I'm not bragging on what I've done. What I'm trying to say is this. If you will get up and obey God, he'll make it easier on you. He will make room for the gifts in you. Oh my gosh, Sister Brenda. Sister Lydia was the first one that came by. She comes back and tells me that I was. she was going to go buy drugs. And after I prayed for her, she didn't want the drugs anymore. She went and bought a man that was homeless a meal. She comes back with him and says, you got to get this lady to pray for you. He comes over. He says, oh, he said, I know you, Brother Russell, that Jeanette and I prayed for. He was the, the guy that she bought the meal for. She, but she said out of her own mouth she was going to go buy drugs, forgot all about the drugs, and went and bought him food, brought him back over here. He shares a testimony with me. Remember, this was a week or so ago, Brother Russell. I, I posted a video, uh, actually a picture of Brother Russell and Sister Janetta. We prayed for him to get a job the next day he got a job. Okay? Think about that. He got a job the very next day. So, we're, we're having people come back and tell us, Hey, Sister with a Testimony, then prayers actually work. Duh! Hello? If you've got any influence with God, that means you've got intimacy and mm, relationship. If you ain't got no power in your prayer, it's because you don't have no relationship. And the relationship you think you have is not the relationship that you need. Because if you have that relationship, that intimacy, and that influence with the Lord God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, born of supernatural substance, he's the boss. And you are born of supernatural substance. Therefore... Your relationship, your intimacy causes you to have influence with him. And the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I ain't talking about Leslie. I'm not talking about sister with a testimony. I'm talking about Yahuwah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the one that empowers you. He gives you that ability and that power. But you got to believe it. you got to receive it. you got to maintain it. you got to sustain it. You can't just gain it. You got to be given the gift. You've got to take the gift, open the gift up, take the gift, open the gift, open it, okay? Once you open it and you pull the card out, guess what? There's something in there. You got to open it and read it. If you don't open the gift and take it out and use it, it's just a gift take what God gave you. If you don't have anything in your hands, you've got love, you've got grace, you've got mercy, you've got salvation, get up out of the pew and go do something for the Lord because you're going to be, just like the rest of us, an unprofitable servant doing exactly what you're supposed to do. You're never going to be any better than an unprofitable servant because we're required to do this. But I'm asking God, I don't want to just be like everybody else and be an unprofitable servant. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. We're all doing what we're supposed to do. Bless me, Lord. Bless us and um, us for no more. Guys, ask the Lord to make you so aware of him all the time that you want to go above and beyond the call of duty, okay? Don't just be a sister with a testimony. Be a soldier with a testimony. Say, Lord, I want to go above and beyond being an unprofitable servant. Look that up. Study it out. You'll find out that that unprofitable servant just doing what he's supposed to do. But what is he really, really doing? Just enough to get by. We're all unprofitable at some point. I'm ready to make some Mm, spiritual mm -hmm, for the Lord. I ain't talking about moolah. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about fame and fortune. I'm talking about souls for the kingdom. Souls. The homeless, the maimed, the lame, the blind, the sick, the destitute, the drug addict, the prostitute, the church folks sitting in a pew every Sunday thinking they're saved. Get out of the Mm, comfort zone, saints, and get into the highways, get into the byways. 
go beat the hedges and the highways and the byways. Compel them to come in. Get up out of your lackadaisical slackness. Lord, bless me. Please fix this and please fix that. He said, get up. You're my hands. You're my feet. You're my voice. Get up and do something. Give somebody a flower. Say, I love you. They say, you don't know me. How can you love me? Say, I got Jesus. I've been born of supernatural substance. I love you, and you can't do nothing about it. I'm going to love you anyhow. I guarantee you God is not going to send you to somebody that's going to reject him. Now, if you just go in your mind, expect to be rejected. But if you go and you're walking in the Spirit of God and you're in a right, a right relationship... He'll send the people to you. He'll send you to them. Your paths will cross. Don't be in such a hurry, saints, that you can't bless somebody and pray for them. Because otherwise, you're too busy. And that means being under Satan's yoke. So if I can come out here and I can have the power and the presence of God Almighty and know that He's protecting me, that He's got my back, that he is safety, that his holy angels surround and protect me, that the blood of the lamb has hidden me, covered me, and protected me. If I can do this, you can do this. Because I was scared at one point to go knock on the doors in the projects. I said, Peop people around here, they drug addicts, Lord. You know, they just, you know, they liable to cut you up or shoot you. He said, Leslie, these are my people, and I'm sending you. Okay, God might not send you to the homeless people or to the drug addicts or to the prostitutes. I ain't never done none of this stuff. I ain't never been a drug addict or an alcoholic or a prostitute or homeless or anything. But I got a heart for them because God gave it to me because he said, if you delight yourself also in me, I'll give you the desires of your heart. But the cool thing is, is he'll change your desires. Okay? And I don't care what church tells me to go to the hospitals and pray and tells me they don't want me there and act like I ain't nothing because if you don't receive the Lord's people you are rejecting him and I'm going to tell you what saints if you're a saint with a testimony if you're a sister with a testimony if you're a soldier with a testimony you need to be friendly to people and you need to love them if they come to your church don't look at them like they some kind of crazy person go speak to them Tell them you love them and you're glad they're there. And if they come there for six months or six minutes, who do you think you are treating people the way that you treat them? And you're a Christian. God is going to hold me accountable the way I treat people. He's going to hold me accountable if I told the truth or if I told a lie. All I'm doing is saying, hey, if you such a saint with a testimony and you a sister with a testimony, you a soldier with a testimony, how can you treat people like you do? Mm-hmm. I'm preaching to the choir now. I tell you what, saints, I come, I set the tent up, I played the music, people get saved, delivered, set free, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, all in one shop. Mm-hmm. One stop shopping interesting they come to a yard sale and they wind up mm, hey that lady's got free water not only do they get free physical water but they get free holy spirit water uh-huh and out of their bellies flow rivers of living water i'm not going to go on about this anymore the fact remains is we need to get up and not just be happy with being an unprofitable servant and doing what we're expected to do we need to go above and beyond the call of duty and we need to treat people like we want to be treated and stop acting like we've got it all together and that we're saints and we're holy. And because we go to church on Sunday, we're going to make heaven. There's going to be a whole lot of people sitting in pews thinking they're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost going to die. Just like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. We're all going to die. But some folk are going to be surprised when they don't make it because he's going to say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. You want to know the Lord? Then get intimate with him. Get in his word. Get on your face and stop making prayer about yourself and start making prayer about your communication with the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. 
Uh huh. You want to pray and ask God to do all this stuff for you, and you do nothing in return. You won't worship Him in spirit and in truth. You just go and show up. Okay, I'm beating the hell out of somebody, but good. You don't need any hell in you. Because if you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, where is there any room for hell? Okay, I'm calling. I'm calling the church out. I love you, church. I love you, saints. I love you, sinners. I'm one of the chief ones. I've been saved. He changed me. And if he can change me, he can change anybody. Woo! Mm. I just want to sing and shout and dance. Mm. I'm going to go home. God bless you. I love you. It's Sister with a te uh, It's Sister with a Testimony. Born of supernatural substance. If you get to the end of this video and you ain't too offended, give me a thumbs up. Give me a love. Give me an angry. I don't care. Just do something. React. Respond to the Lord. I ain't trying to get likes. I'm just trying to get through to some hard-headed folks because I've been there. I love you. God bless you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you to hide, protect, keep you. It's reconciled you, restored you, and revived you. God bless you. I love you. Love you. Love you. Later. Sister for the testimony. I'm the button. Oh, hello. Hello.